Welcome to the round table, everyone. Happy post Mother's Day from the round table squad. Listen, we have a few mothers with us today. Happy post Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's yeah. Day. So I am joined today by my beautiful co-host, Jano. Hi. How lovely. Mm -hmm. And our special guest, she's very special to me this morning, Lezan Azan, HR consultant at Boss Furniture and lead pastor at Zeal Church. Welcome to the round table. Thank you. Yeah. So happy to be here. Okay. How has it been? How was your Mother's Day? Was it everything you thought it would have been and more? Yeah, I had a great Mother's Day. A great, great Mother's Day. You know, like some people like to go out and stuff. Yeah. But my Johnny, he cooks. Oh my gosh. And her Johnny so, is her husband. You know, yeah. my Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. He cooks and he made like a smoked salmon. My favorite thing that he makes is a smoked salmon grilled cheese, and he made that for breakfast. But then he kept it coming with a breakfast burrito. I can't. And it was just yeah. I was spoiled. And then, I, and then I wanted a place in my house like cleaned up for Mother's Day. That just was one my place. Gift. That just was just one your place. one ask. Because it's just been yeah. driving me nuts. Yeah. Do you know that he did it by himself? Like he didn't need oh, my input gee. or anything. I was like, oh my God, this I'm is the so best happy. Mother's Day ever. <laughs> You can tell we're of a certain age when this is what delights us, like a space in my home is clean. How yes. was your Mother's Day, Lizanne? It was very good. Um, Omar and Jace, they made breakfast for me. No. And then you know that we spoke, um, we had a panel at church yes, Sunday yes, evening. Yes, yes. So most of the day was spent like preparing right, for right, right. the yeah. panel and... And yeah. then we went out for dinner in the evening. Very cool. Went to yeah. church so we were, in the evening. So yep. we're made to feel yeah. special. That's awesome. All right. So we're going to jump into things. Let's go and check out what's going on on our social buzz. Eat the, the cereal law. Who you know I mean? did that? I don't know. We need to talk. We need to have a, a family three. meeting in here. Camera three, DJ. Yeah, we need to have it's a family you. meeting. DJ, I know it's you. I saw crumbs on your cheek. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> DJ. <laughs> DJ, you can't tell me not that you deal with the cocoa puff there. <laughs> I know it. I'm shame all out of them. Mm -hmm. When I must talk up. This is life. No. DJ, let me see your face. DJ was shocked Are you over guilty? there. <laughs> DJ, I can't believe they did that to you. Social bias. Whoa. I can't like, believe. No, I'll get back at them for you. <laughs> so guys, so the whole thing is we'll have three cereal containers back there in one of our set spaces. And we just find that every few morning in the kitchen. Yeah. It just, it just, it just has good old everything. Down. Nobody's supposed to touch it. Nobody's supposed to eat it. So then what's the mystery? But what it's happens a lot of night? people that do it. I'm sure it's not just DJ. 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 <laughs> I, I Speak really, up for I, I'm so sorry. I can't even <laughs> believe they did this to you. I am so, so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. <laughs> so let's kick off the next segment. Now it's time for our bag of things. I see some few little things. I'm excited for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So you know I'm the one with the things all the time. So my <laughs> bag of things today is handmade cards from Lyric. My son is two. Nice. And Super I cute. must tell you, like obviously he gets help because he goes to this school that has, you know, a lot of aunties. <laughs> and they love him and he loves them, so I love it. And so this was this year's Mother's Day card. That's it's so Happy cute. Mother's Day. So I would imagine that what they have him do is like the crepe paper. They probably have him roll it up so that they could stick it on like in the form of flowers. So this is the bouquet. And then because he can't write yet, right? So they, <laughs> <laughs> they print something, dear mom and everything. But it's so cute because yeah. like when I pick him up, they like actually hand it, like they give it to him to hand to me. So he's like, mommy, this is for you. Oh, he's so excited. And, yeah, so he did one for Valentine's Day as well because the, the one from last year, the one from last year was really cool. I don't know if they have, I send them a picture, but I don't know if they have it. But it had like his handprint made the bouquet. Mm. So like he painted the hand on there mm -hmm. and then um, that's what the flowers were. You remember were. those days, Leza? Yeah, like it's so cute. And then there's this one. <laughs> this one was for Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day is real special oh, because what happens cute. is, um, this is a dinosaur one. It says, you are dino-mite. Dino 
I love you. Right? And then, so with this one, I would imagine they make him draw these lines and they make, him stick this, yeah, mm -hmm. they make him stick this. Yeah, they make him stick this thing. And then it opens this way, but he tore it after, you know? <laughs> that's what they, that's what they that's do at what that they age. Do, yeah. Um, but cute. it's really sweet because there's always one for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. He comes with two, one for Mommy and for Daddy. So I feel like, oh my gosh, I cherish these that's things. That's special. I remember how those old days. is he? How, he's, how old? He's, he's two. 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 Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and yeah, and just where to store those. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> All right. So I see something hot coming. I hope I smell something hot coming, but I won't have my host. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Abby. All right. So. <laughs> in our box today. All right, so the topic, parental influence versus child autonomy, nurturing individuality. Mm. Mm. I like this topic. I, like I really too. like this topic. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to kick off with our beautiful guest because she has three amazing kids. I think she's probably ahead of all of us. Uh, what, what stands out to you in that? Um, well, I have three sons. Yes. They're 28, 26, and 12. Okay. Two daughters-in-law mm. and a granddaughter that's two. Um, Violet. I wish we had a picture. She's so I have cute. To call She's out, the cutest thing. You know, Jay said, are you going to mention my name on... So, so Hi, Jace. Jace. Hi, Jace. We love you, Jace. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, well, for me personally, I am responsible to train up my child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to their morals and their beliefs and their values, yeah. I think I'm responsible to help train them in that way. So I think we have to differentiate between character development mm -hmm. and, or character training right. and gift development. Yeah. Because gift development... That's a whole other is where I need to, they're unique in that way, right. they're different. So their gifts are gonna be different, mm -hmm. so I need to help them to find out what those are and help to nurture that. Yeah, um, which I think is interesting because you have three boys that you, and I'm sure they're very different. All and I can't wait to different. get into it with you, you know, with just knowing how to. Right, so to differentiate aut autonomy, your I yeah. would say, is the gift development trying to hone in on their unique qualities and right. their gifts and their passions and their interests. Mm -hmm. But where it, when it comes to moral, morals, values, beliefs, not so much because children, I think, are, are natural tendencies to be selfish and their decisions are short-sighted. And if I don't help to train them in that way, then I'm mm -hmm. leaving them for the environment or the culture um, or the trends to shape that and right. that's not what awesome. I, I love that. I really really yeah. love hearing that. G, where do you stand on this topic? So um, I, I think what Lizanne said is like right where we should all be. Yeah, um, because we're here to guide them, right? Um, so in terms of the morals and building character and all that. Yes um, in terms of their you put it as gift development. Um, I think it's just their interests, really. Yeah. Um, and they might have strengths and that sort of a thing. I think they come out, we don't know them, right? We're getting to know them. My son is only two, right? So I've been a mom for like five minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, what I do is anything he gravitates to, right. I'm like his biggest cheerleader. So like I'm going, we're going hard. So yeah. he says he wants football. Okay, you're going to be in football. Okay. If you want to draw, okay, every crayon, every marker, we're going to do this. <laughs> I like, love that. So you're sensitive to that. that he is interested in. So yeah. I see him loving to dance, and, like, he bounces every time there's a music. He has every instrument now. <laughs> like, that's how it's going. Gianna, can you be my mom? <laughs> that's so funny. So, so, so for me, it's so funny because Bruce and I have been talking, you know, and, you know, hopefully one day we'll, we'll, we'll have a child. And so I was sitting there thinking, do we decide from now what we want our child's future to look like? Because I've been reading a couple of books, and when I think back to Serena and Venus, their parents had a plan for them before they even knew they were conceived. And they went into that, and luckily they weren't resentful that this is what their parents had them. They didn't even wait to find out if they had a gift in, in, in <laughs> dancing or, or singing, right? And then I have another couple who did an experiment where they had three children, they wanted them to be chess stars. Mm -hmm. So they put chess players on the wall, they had chess boards, and that's all they allowed them to know. And by the age 12, they were like the biggest chess players in the world. So I know that that is a fact. Uh, however, when it comes to like religion and denomination, coming from California, I know parents who don't even decide on the sex. They allow the child to play with dolls and trucks and figure it out on their own. 
So I'm very averse to that. I do believe that God chose me on purpose for my children. I do believe I have some kind of authority and, and influence why he brought me here, why he brought to the country I live in. And, and so I need to trust my ideas and hopes of my children, you know. So it's interesting because, yes, I don't budge on, like, say, religion or... It, it's, just a, it's just such a sensitive topic. So I love talking about this because I want to know where to find that happy balance with uh, putting the energy into what I believe they should be a part of uh, and, and then leaving it to kind of But you know, out. there's mm -hmm. limitations to that <laughs> though, right? Go for because it. Because when, when it comes to you deciding yeah. for them, you know, a fish will never be able to climb a tree. Fair. So it's like a lot that goes into affecting their psyche mm -hmm. when they can't actually ever live up to the expectations that you have for them. Um, so I feel like I feel like in certain instances it might not be the best thing, yeah. which is why. But I understand your examples yeah. of this Serena starting early, mm -hmm. right. right? Right. So start early, which is why my son is two and he has every instrument. <laughs> he showed me a little bit. <laughs> So all you, you just need to give me a little bit, mm -hmm. but yeah. So, so that's the thing, though. Yeah. So let's hold that thought. This is so fun. Mm -hmm. More on the round table after this break, you guys. Thank you, Mama, for the nine months you carried me through all those pain and suffering. No one knows the pressure you bear. Just only you. You my Welcome back to the round table. This morning, if you missed it, our topic is parental influence versus child autonomy, nurturing individuality. So we've been having a riveting conversation and before the break, Gianna was telling us a little Yeah, story. I was just talking about the limitations that yeah. exist when, uh, when you know, you think that there's something good for your child yeah. or you plan ahead, which, I mean, as parents, we want to plan, right? Because we want to be able to put all our ducks in a row and get it, give them the best possible, right? Um, so the best possible, we might think we know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing is that the kids might think differently right. and feel differently. And even though I talk about how I make sure he has every instrument, mm -hmm. like in two years, he might tell me he's not into mm -hmm. music. And you're okay with just yeah, shifting and pivoting as needed. Yeah, we have to pivot, needed. like we yeah. have to yeah. work it out because nobody knows, you don't even know what you end up falling into later in life. I don't even know what life. I want to do yeah, right I now. <laughs> and I think sometimes as parents, you have to be careful not to put your desires on the child. So, for instance, mm -hmm. if you have a parent that wanted to be a lawyer and they never became uh, a lawyer. Yeah. So now they want their child to become a lawyer. Right. But and then they become very controlling. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to be careful not to fall into the, the trap of becoming too controlling because right. the root of control really is fear. So having your three boys, right? What did you learn? Or maybe something that you would say really worked and you're carrying it on with Jace and maybe you can teach your granddaughter. And what would you ha sh have shifted? Um, well, when they're born, they, are, they have these personalities mm -hmm. already, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're all so different. It's like the, the person that was two, when they're 14, yeah. like you see like the, the core the personality traits. Oh, I love that. And yeah. um, it's just to hone in on that and help to develop it, but not to put my desires on them mm -hmm. um, and to give them the freedom to explore their passions and their interests with their own unique quirks and their own unique personalities and, and to push that, you yeah. know? So like one might be more quiet, one might be very outgoing. Right. What are you going to do to hone in on both mm -hmm. of those? Because both have their strengths. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want to jump into something that's a little bit, I, I feel like I'm old school, old school here. If your child, I know Jace is super into social media and if my child says, hey, mom, I want to be a TikTok star, I don't know that I am ready to be like, hey, go for it. How can I encourage it? I feel like I'm a little bit old school in terms of really wanting them, go get your degree. Like, I can't believe I'm there. I know. Are you so disappointed in me? I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really am. Gianna is our, our, our forward-thinking mom at the table. But, uh, but that's where the world is going, you know. Are we ready as parents, as grandparents, even in Jamaica, you can tell me in YouTube, um, for, for these new kind of jobs. You're not no longer going for the doctor, the lawyer, the entrepreneur. You, they're, they're very unconventional. They're selling t-shirts. People, you know, they're going on YouTube just telling a story and they're making millions and that's what's going to, uh, you know, support their family. Um, I think the best advice you can give them in that, in that scenario yeah. is that they 
need to not be looking for the money. I know this is weird, but they need to be looking for something they love, the passion, because the money will come. Whatever it is that they're doing, they need to be the best at as themselves. Like they yeah. need to be the best themselves yeah. in that space. Mm -hmm. They need to be the expert in that space. So if it's TikTok, be the best mm -hmm. TikTok ever and make sure you have one billion mm -hmm. views and all these things. Like that's mm -hmm. how you encourage them. But if it is that so they be the just, best at whatever, whatever you it is do. you choose to do. And they, if yeah. Go ahead. No, I think that comes back to character development yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Because wherever you go, your character is going with you, ah, whether it's TikTok or whatever, whether, whatever it is that you're doing. <clears throat> and I think that, um, for example, say it's TikTok. Yes. There's so many things that you're concerned about with TikTok. Yes. Right? So, but if you train them well to make right. good decisions, yeah. to have the right character, um, to be responsible, mm -hmm. then to be giving, to be serving, right. um, to not be all consumed with money, then mm -hmm. those things are going to go with them wherever they are. But right. they're, they're like jobs out there that we don't even know exist yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can't be too, <clears throat> sorry, old fashioned where right. we're not open to realize that 10 years from now, there are going to be jobs that exist that we don't even know about right, right. now. Mm -hmm. And to be very honest with you, I think in a lot of situations where parents try to impose on their children what profession or mm -hmm. career they need, career path they need to go mm -hmm. on. I think it is rooted in money. They want to know that their kids will be able to be self-sufficient and they will be able to support themselves. Mm -hmm. So they choose like doctor, lawyer, accountant, Indian chief, so it's, whatever it's it is. with a good intention in mind that it's stable. I don't know that it's a good intention oh. though because it's teaching mm -hmm. them to go for the money. I see what you're saying. And I so see therefore the TikTok person who goes for the money, it's like, okay, you've done this one viral post and what now? Like, what happens after that? Because you're still chasing, and you're chasing for the wrong reasons. If you are trying to offer the world the best you, that's what you're continually trying to do. That will be your message on TikTok. That will be your message in the classroom. That will be your message mm -hmm. wherever it is. So if that's what you're doing, then you will continuously rise. Right. And you will always be, you know, leveling up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I it's the it's whole... Beautiful. Aspiration in a sense, because I wonder if our parent generation, like when you start a wholesale or a supermarket that just comes down in the generations, you don't desire, you don't know if you like it. That's not something that you say, oh, this is my passion. You kind of just do it for, you know, just bring it, you know, for the betterment of the family. Right. And Dr. Law, a similar thing, it, you know, it's the stability that you're looking for. It's something that, you know, is sustainable. And so I find that like what you're saying, the forward thinker, it's beyond that now, you're looking at it being a passion that drives it even before sustainability, something that's secure, something that is sure. I mean, survival is a different thing though, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. so if it yeah. is that you need to survive and you want to, but that's not ultimately your career goal, right? Yeah. That's only to get you to a certain point. Yeah. So you do what you have to until you can do what you want to. But if you're fostering the strengths and the interests of the child, right. then they will also know that they're doing this right now. They're bagging groceries because they need to go through college if it is that college right. is the way for that career, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So I know this conversation is getting hot, but it's time already for another break. It goes so quickly. <laughs> See you soon, guys, after the break. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. Time flies when good things are happening and man, good things are happening at this table. So just so you know, uh, we're down to final thoughts. We're gonna jump in with Lizanne. She had a really good point. Sometimes I think the breaks are when we have some of the <laughs> best conversations. I'm like, you have to repeat that. So um, just, I loved your example about the No, sign. I was just giving an example yeah. of my daughter-in-law's brother. Yes. He was in his first year of university but he was experimenting. He's very creative, very yes. entrepreneurial. So he was making slime and he was posting the slime on Instagram like once every day. He committed to do that, which again was, is a character trait yeah. because if you're going to commit to post every day for a year, you have to, when you see two likes, you right. still have to be consistent right. and have the self-discipline so to do it. You give and he had child. that, right. 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 Discipline. Yeah. And so he continued and he started to get followers and then he decided to, to put it for sale one day and it sold out and it wow. just kept happening over and over again. And eventually it, start, it was a, a viable business. Right. And so parents had to decide, is it okay to come out of school? 
But of course, traditionally, you have to finish school. Right, yeah. And so they allowed him and they had the freedom to make him to, you know, engage in this pursuit. And now it's like a very strong, viable business. You wow. can check it out, Slime Obsidian, Slime okay. Obsidian yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And um, yeah, it's a viable business. I mean, he can always go back to school, yeah. right. but this is an like opportunity. Jennifer. You don't know how long this is gonna last. Right. And they gave him the freedom to explore this interest yeah. and, to, yeah. and to go ahead so with what it. what I'm hearing. And that's Slime. A, yeah, this yeah. openness in our parenting to yeah. be, to think outside of just the box and allow our children to take those kind of risks. So we're on to our final thoughts. Yeah. So, so, G, how do you want to end out our time together? Well, a lot of times, a lot of times, also their experience that they get from these endeavors will help them if they decide to go back to school. Like these are things. Remember, we're learning. We're supposed to be learning everywhere. Right, you're lifelong learners. Um, yeah. mm. So we can support our children. My final thought is that <laughs> we can support our children in their interests because they're learning and they're experiencing new things. Um, if it is that we actually think that something is better for them, we can suggest it. Yeah. But I don't think we should be forcing them into anything because we have our own lives mm -hmm. that we were able to live. Yeah. Um, some of us did it. Under pressure, I suppose, but not me. <laughs> yeah. um, so you can, yeah, you can support them and suggest things and let them find their way. It's their life. They have to live with every single decision that they make. Yeah. And it, it's terrible if you have to live with someone else's decision. Yeah. I think my final thought would be, as, as you do with Lyric, is offer them a variety of options when they're younger so that they can explore. They can kind of put their hand in every little thing to know, what do, what do I really love to do? And unlike, I think my parents are a little bit more old school, they kind of told me what to do. I listen to my children more than I do, than I don't. And, and just hope that they know what they're saying and, um, and trust them. Yeah, what, do, what, what would you close um, up with? My final thoughts, I think, would be that it's my responsibility yes. to focus on their morals yes, and their character yes. development so that they can grow up to be responsible adults making good decisions. Um, but in terms of their gifts, I need to allow that flexibility. Each child is different, each one is unique. You know, we have to be careful not to become helicopter moms or yes, tiger moms yes, yes. and try to control too many things because if you control every decision that they're gonna yeah. make, then mm -hmm. how are they gonna grow up to make good decisions? Right. And so, yeah. and to just, be excited about their uniqueness and Perfect. their differences. Perfect. Yes, yeah. that. that was beautiful. Thing. Mm -hmm. I think we ended on a really good note. And guys, I know you wanted to stay long with us, but that's a wrap for the round table today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Enjoy the spillover from Mother's Day, all the mothers. And for the rest of our weekly sunrises, as you go forward into the world, remember to be good and, and be, be on purpose. in my heart we a dream What's your weakness? What's your type? Somehow